Okay, let's begin our meeting this evening, okay? Welcome everybody and thank you all for coming. I'm pleasantly surprised by the size of the group. Um, this evening we have a guest, Rich Harder, from the Archdiocese. He's going to be doing a presentation on strategic planning, so pay close attention, take good notes. And uh, let, the, let the creative juices flow. Huh? For all that, let's begin our meeting with prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Loving God, we thank you for the gift of this autumn season, which reminds us of the changes that take place in life, in our environment. Send your spirit among us this evening as we gather. Inspire us, guide us, help us to discern what is best for our parish community as we venture into this strategic planning process. Give us creativity and clearness of thought, and we may do what is best with the gift that has been, and has been entrusted to us as stewards. Watch over our gathering and our parish community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rich, you're on. Come on, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is a very beautiful looking group here. Thanks for coming out on, uh, well, not too cold, but a little bit rainy night. Uh, fantastic. Uh, that's me um, from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. I have nothing to sell. I'm not here to sell you anything. <laughs> I, I'm, and I'm not going to take a collection and none of that. None of that. No, we're, uh, uh, we're just going to, I'm, I'm going to present to you um, kind of a, just a little bit of background on strategic planning and why you may or may not want to do it and what it means. Uh, I'm going to share some tools that we have and how we could walk with you in uh, any planning you want to do, and then we'll have a little question and answer so that we can, um, you know, get clear any of your questions and uh, see where you, and, you know, see where you want to go with any of this uh, as, we, as we go through. Um, just always like to mention that um, I love coming to Racine. Uh, my roots are in Racine. Both of my parents grew up here. And um, um, so um, many, many a holiday we were in Racine with the, the both grandparents, and the vivid memory I have is, <clears throat> if you know about grandparents, you know that they love to feed you. <laughs> so we always tried to negotiate this thing, you know, where, well, okay, you know, we'll have the big meal here, but then we're just going to come over for, like, cake and coffee over to the other grandma, and, they, and, you know, and we'd alternate that, you know, on the holidays. And, and every time it was the same thing happened, they, both of them would, oh, yes, sure, that sounds very good. Uh, and then we'd go to the first one, get the big meal, and be like, oh, this, you know, thank goodness we're not. And then we get to the second grandma, and guess what? Yeah. Big meal. <laughs> so many a ride home. We lived in Menominee Falls. and um, Many a ride home in the falls. I would hear, I was just as a little kid. I, I didn't know what Tums meant <laughs> or Pepto-Bismol. I didn't know what these words me meant at the time, but... There was a lot of talk of that, a lot of talk of Tums and, and things like that. So, uh, but it was beautiful. So my roots are in Racine, and I'm really happy to be with you tonight. Um, so we're just going to take a little bit of a journey on um, strategic planning, and um, just want to kind of uh, foreshadow a little bit with the, the question of, you know, just some questions. Um, you know, why plan? Um, why plan? Right? You know, why should we plan? Uh, is that a good thing, not a good thing? What are the advantages and disadvantages of planning or not planning? All right, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, what does it mean to plan from a missionary perspective, which is an, another way of saying from, from a perspective of faith, right? What, what makes that different? I, I don't know all about you. How many here? I always like to ask this question before I start to know if I should just quickly pack up and leave. Um, how many of you have had uh, in your works, your various work or associations with community groups or wherever, you know, wherever you found yourself, how many of you have had experience with strategic planning? Raise those hands high. Okay, so, you know, take a look around the room. We have pretty good representation here. How many of you have, now this is a real important question, how many of you had bad experiences with strategic planning? Raise your hand and raise them high. Be proud. Right. You know, how many of you have had, you know, gone through hours and hours and hours and hours of stuff and paper and post-it notes and God knows what all and gotten a binder this thick that sat on a shelf and collected dust and nothing really happened? 
Anybody here have that? Right, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, Should I just leave now? Or is that <laughs> so, so I always ask that because that, that's just the God's honest truth. That everyone's had, a, you know, most of us have had in some, some way in our lives, way, shape, or form, some, some interaction with strategic planning, and, and many times it's not good. Um, it's like, well, that was a lot, you know, we, we paid a, a super expensive, highly paid, you know, consultant to come in and do a bunch of stuff. And we spent a ton of money and we landed with a bunch of paper, but, but nothing really changed, right? Well, I can tell you that I'm not going to, we're not going to have that happen here for a number of reasons. One, I am not a highly paid consultant, so you don't have to worry about that. I work for the church happily so for 41 years. Uh, so if that we can cross that one off, you know, you don't have to worry about the, the highly paid consultant. Um, we don't believe in cr creating a big binder of paper. Um, uh, so we can cross that one off. Uh, and we don't believe in plan do making plans in such a way that nothing happens. Right? Um, the other thing, what about this one? This is also very common. Uh, how many of you are involved in strategic planning that, that ended up with like, 25, 30, 50 different things you were going to do. Anybody have that? Right? That's also very common. Planning, and now we got, you know, it's like, ugh, you got all these things, and, and if you have too many things, you have nothing. Right? So that's the other thing that we never do and don't believe in, is we don't believe in planning that results in multiple, multiple outcomes. So you're not going to do it. It's just not doable. No organization. I mean, in, in the literature, is very clear. And so it doesn't matter if you're in business or nonprofit or churches or, you know, the YMCA. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, the literature teaches us that no organization uh, can focus on any more than one to two to three major strategic priorities. Three is pushing the limit. So the minute you get four, five, ten, you've got, you've got chaos. So we're not going to do any of those things. So what are we going to do? And that's what we want to talk about. Uh, what do we, you know, what is strategic planning? So this is what we're going to cover. Why strategic planning? What is it? What is a missionary plan? How does the process work? And who's involved? And again, um, I just want to say this up front. One, I have nothing to sell. So um, we're not going to make you do anything. Two, we're, we're just presenting a concept so that you can think about it. And we can talk about, is this helpful to you at all? Right? Uh, two, Everything we do, we customize to the parish, all right? So uh, that's the other thing. Um, how many of you have had consultants, in, you know, again, in your work-related uh, lives or, or, or associations who, where you've, you've uh, uh, they, they basically, um, it's, it's like a canned process. They, do, they come in and they do their canned process and they get, pick, pick up their check and they go home, right? So that's another thing that we're, uh, another disclaimer, right? So uh, we don't believe in that. So uh, what we're doing tonight is giving you a kind of a 30,000 foot um, concept of what strategic planning is. We're also going to give you some, um, uh, I'm going to share some tools that we have to work with. Uh, but then in the end, we, we want to ask the question, what do you want? How do we want to customize it for your needs and your situation? And um, how do we want to work together in that way? Okay, make sense? Are we good? So why, what, how, who? Here we go. Talk about why. Uh, I like to use this image of vacationing. I don't know. Um, some people are super spontaneous, I guess. I'm not one of them. Um, but uh, think about when you go on vacation, uh, what, is, what are the steps? Let's just talk to get, by the way, this is the audience participation of the program, one of them. Um, <clears throat> when you go on vacation, uh, what does it take? Well, you have to pack your bags, right? What else? Pick out a date. What else? Where in the heck are we going, right? Where are we going to go? A lot of, and, and then what else? Money. Got to pay for it. <laughs> I guess we're not going. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, else, what else is involved in terms of the getting from point A to point Z and back again? What are you going to do? What's the itinerary, right? Like, like you know, well, are we, we're going to stop here. We're going to see that, we're going to, right? You know, so there, there's, there, you know, you think about a vacation from, I think we should go on vacation when you start there. And to get to, we're actually on vacation. There's a lot of steps along the way, right? Um, 
the uh, you know, have you heard the the Stephen Covey um, quote um, teaching? I think it's from the Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, start with the ending. Have you ever heard of that? Start with the ending. This that's the idea where you, you start, and that's kind of like vacation, right? It, like, where do we really want to go? Okay, we want to go to Disneyland. Okay, fine. So that's our ending, right? And then you have to kind of reverse engineer, mm -hmm. right? You have to kind of, well, okay. Well, where are we going to stay along the way? And how are we going to get there? And what's the, all those kind of things, right? Um, uh, there's also, so that's how we get where we're going, right? Um, well, guess what? If you don't plan, like, let's just say, hey, let's go now. And then you get in the car and you have no plan whatsoever. Um, it's probably going to fall apart. Anybody here the kind of person who wants no plans and a totally spontaneous vacation? There's always at least, there's, there's always at least one, which is why I always, you know, kind of temper this a little bit to say that's a different style, right? That's great. Um, so the question becomes, different styles, right? So the question becomes, um, uh, when we think about our parish, when we think about our church, when you think about our, our, our Catholic family here at St. Rita, um, which style do we want? Do we want to, you know, do we want to plan? Or do we want to be spontaneous, right? Um, strategic planning is the, you know, you, you understand the answer. For strategic planning, we believe that if you want to get to a, a, some sort of desired end, and, uh, and you need to get steps in the, in the, along the process to get there. And because um, usually what happens, I don't know, um, uh, at least for most people, um, if you don't plan anything, very little happens, <laughs> right? So, you know, we all do this in our lives, right? You know, you probably plan to do your laundry. You know, imagine if you didn't, to just pile up or the dishes or whatever it is. You know, you have to have plans to get things done, basically. So that's what this is all about. Um, the other thing is this. Um, we always like to talk about, and this is where another distinction we have with sort of secular strategic planning is, we understand that we are a people of faith. Um, we understand that um, God has a plan for each one of us personally, right? That each none of us is a mistake, right? None of us is a mistake. Each one of us has been conceived by God before we were born, right? Before we were in our mother's womb um, and, and then brought to life with a purpose and a plan unique in all the world. No one else ever like you before or after, right? So we know God has a plan for each of us individually. Uh, we know that God has a plan for the human race, right, for all creation, right, because God's been involved in that from the beginning of time. If you've read your Bible from beginning to end, most people get bogged down in Levit Leviticus, by the way. Um, if you've ever read the Bible from beginning to end, you, you know that joke, right, because we get really lots of laws there. But um, if you read the Bible and you understand church teaching, we know that God has a plan for all of us and all creation, all society, right? And I would wager to say that um, because we're people of faith, I hope you feel this way as well, that you also believe firmly, fervently, strongly that God also has a plan for your parish. Right? So I don't believe God would, um, in, in the mystery of his plan, would, would have any church, any parish, uh, for no reason. That doesn't make sense to me. Right? So if God has a plan for each one of us in all creation, why would he not have a plan for your parish? So that's the other thing is that when we talk about strategic planning, we're not just talking about on a human level, just like, well, what should we do? You know, uh, we're saying as a people of faith, let's let's prayerfully, let's let's listen, let's carefully, let's trust, let's believe that God has plans for us. Right? And I think that's also important uh, uh, as people of faith, because um, life is hard. There's struggles. Parish life is hard. There's things we, we struggle with. Right. But, and, and you can kind of take two roads. You can say, well, well I guess, well, this isn't going to work, right? You can throw your hands up, throw your hands up in, in, in despair and say, well, yeah, it's just a failure, right? Or we can say as people of faith, no, no, God is with us, right? Jesus said it, right? Um, I'll be with you to the end of the days, right? So um, planning is not just um, a technical act or um, some sort of, uh, thing we do on a human level, it's actually an act of faith. Especially if we approach it and say, we believe that God has a plan. And I like to say it this way, um, I believe God has big plans for your parish. 
not just see again as human beings i think sometimes we we you know we just think too small because that's you know we're human right but god is big and god is amazing and god is magnificent and and so god has not only a plan for your prayers but big plans so let's let's dream that way and plan that way so what is a missionary plan right it's getting strategic about mission, about the mission of Jesus and the mission of his church. You know, um, sometimes we don't hear this often enough, um, but the church, um, let me say it this way, Jesus himself was a mission. It was a mission from the Father, right? To save the world, to, to set us free from sin and, and show us a new way of life and bring us back into eternal life and union with, with the Father, right? So Jesus himself was a mission from the Father. There was a purpose, there was a movement, and there, was, there were outcomes that were divinely in, uh, desired and planned, right? So Jesus himself is a mission. And of course, the church, what is the church? The church is Jesus' mission embodied after his death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. The church is Jesus going to the disciples at the end and saying, um, go and make disciples of all nations. Right? Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching everyone what I've taught you, and lo, I'll be with you to the end of time. So sometimes we think, well, you know, we think in terms of static, you know, like my parish is, is just here in this place. And it, but when really what all of us are swept up in is the great mission uh, of the Father through Jesus in union with the Holy Spirit for the transformation of the world. So uh, we want to get strategic about that, and we want to ask ourselves, what is the missionary plan of Jesus, right? Especially in this place and time. St. Rita, uh, November the 10th, right? Uh, 6.50 p.m. right here and now, right? So that's, that's, that's a, also a journey of faith, right? So we want to uh, realize that Jesus has a mission to transform the world uh, the, actually, the Father has a mission to transform the world from the beginning of time. Jesus is the next mo big movement in that. Uh, and then the sending of the Holy Spirit and then the birth of the church to, up until this day is continuing the very mission of God. So we want to ask, how do we unleash that mission more? Um, uh, this goes back to what's Jesus' plan for us. So that's the quote I just used, Matthew 28. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples who make new disciples. Right? All of us are here. Each one of us are here today because of that commission, the great commission that Jesus gave to those first disciples, right? Because how did we get here? <laughs> how did we get our faith? How were we uh, brought into a relationship with Christ in the Catholic Church? Well, guess what? We're standing on the shoulders all of every a whole bunch of generations and saints and martyrs and, and, and great, great, great grandmas and grandpas and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, because of that first commission. And so that's also why we think about missionary planning. We want to ask ourselves, you know, that mission is not stopping. It, it, it's divinely um, energized. And so we want to just discern how, what's the next step in that mission of Jesus uh, for you and I here and now, St. Rita Parish, Racine, Wisconsin. Missionary planning asks some of these questions. Are we making disciples? How can we make more disciples? Are we sending any disciples? So um, while we think about a lot of things, we think about demographics and we think about buildings and we think about you know, uh, multiple dimensions of things, we aren't just about the earthly, right? We're not just gonna manage uh, assets. <laughs> How do we manage our assets or whatever? Because this is the big ask that Jesus wants from us. People growing in relationship to him and following him deeper and truer every day. And so how can we go on mission to help uh, that? We also ask questions like, how can we bear more fruit than we're bearing right now? Right? Um, how can we plan in such a way that, that the, the plans of God bear more fruit than they already are? Right? Just as my father's glorified that this is how my father's glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. That's really why we plan. I always ask this question. Uh, I get calls quite often at the office about, um, hey, we want to we want a plan. <laughs> and I and, and I always ask, well, well, plan toward what? Because when you think about it, um, we could plan toward a lot of things, right? Uh, we could plan toward uh, fiscal responsibility. Let's just plan so that we're in the black every year. That's a way to plan, right? Let's, uh, 
Or um, we had one parish call and they said, well, uh, we, we have an empty school building, the school closed, um, and we just, we, we just want to sell it. And I said, well, do you really want to sell it? Uh, what else could you use a building for? And by the way, just selling or keeping the building is not really the question. The question is, what is your mission? Let's talk about your mission. Let's do some planning around your mission and discern. Um, and then it'll be obvious should we keep the building or not, right? But if we just reduce our thinking um, to, well, we got to fix that or organize that or sell that or what have you, uh, we're missing the big point which Jesus was about from the beginning, which was, I'm sending you somewhere. You're on mission to make disciples. So how can we do that better? All right? <clears throat> we're up to the what. With Jesus in mind and mission in mind, what mission questions should we ask? Here's the other thing that I notice a lot. Uh, is sometimes we're afraid to ask the big questions. Sometimes we're either afraid to ask the big questions or we, we're just, we just kind of go through the motions and just never take time to ask the big questions. And that's also part of what strategic missionary planning is about, is asking some of the big questions. So I'm going to ask you now, this is also, by the way, um, because I've been talking a long time, so now I'm worried you've tuned out. Uh, this is also part of the uh, uh, audience participation portion of the program. Let's just say, you know, let's just pause for a second here. Uh, when you just think about the church today and you think about your parish today and, and just where we are right now, um, what, what might be some big questions? Where is everybody? Yes. 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 Right? So, you know, we, we could keep going along day by day, week by week, without ever asking that question. Now, now what the answer is, that's a discovery process and that's a journey. It's also a, an act of faith to believe that the Lord will help us. By asking that question now, we're, we're on a journey toward, okay, let's work on that, right? What else? What's some other big questions? How do we get them back? How do we get them back? Right. By the way, every parish in the archdiocese is, is, is in this same boat. Where did they go? Uh-oh, they're not coming back, some of them. How are we going to get them back? Uh, wh what about the people that were leaving before the pandemic even happened? And, you know, the, you know big questions. Another quest big question? Any other big questions? Yes, perfect, absolutely, right? Do you see how these questions are very different questions from the kinds of, these are not your everyday operating procedure questions, right? Um, you know, these are not paying the bills, making sure everything's where it's supposed to be, getting things organized. No, these are the, you step back and then you ask the bigger questions. And of course, the bigger your question is, of the deeper your discovery and potential for some really creative and, and profound kind of planning, right? So when we talk about this kind of planning, the, this is what we're going for. We're going for the big questions, right? We could, there's a million other big questions, by the way. Yes? Yeah, I, I understand the membership part of it, but even wider, how do we make sure that every child of God feels loved? Yes. From the minute they're born? Yes. Yes. There are so, this is what I'm saying. There are so many big questions, and a lot of times we just don't ask them. Was it something I said? Oh, okay. It's, it's okay. I couldn't resist. <laughs> See, and I, what I'm really wondering now is why more of you didn't take the choir. Even if you don't sing, oh, got to go to choir. Yeah, okay, well, that's good. Well, I'm a singer, so I'm all about going to that choir. But anyway, I'll stay with you for now. But anyway, you get the point, right? The, it, many times, and this is just human, right? Because if you're like me, uh, it takes all your energy to, you know, um, get up in the morning, get ready for work, go to work, do your work, come home, somehow, what are we going to eat? We've got to make food, clean, clean the toilet, right? You know, all these basic, right? Well, I don't do it that often. But every once in a while, uh, whether it needs it or not. But you know what I mean, right? That the, 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 um, the, the demands of daily life. 
are such that we don't have a lot of discretionary time. You know, how many of you have tons of hours where you're pretty much bored and have nothing to do? Raise your hand. Hey, that, you're the, I want to talk to you afterwards. Because I'm retired. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. That's great. Most people don't have this, right? So, and it's the same with churches and any organization on the planet. We're so busy doing what we're supposed to do that we don't ever have, we don't ever pause and say, let's just pause for a second and ask some deeper questions. Right? So that's what this is about. Dreaming big dreams, praying big prayers. Uh, let's do that. So we call it missionary planning because it's not that. We are not going to use post-it notes. That looks like a nightmare to me. Right? I don't know. I don't know what your definition of hell is, but <clears throat> this is pretty close to it for me. Um, so we're not going to do that. We're also not going to be in the businessy world of let's just increase profits. Right? That's really not what we're asking. If it was spelled differently, like P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S, that'd be different. We probably should be about increasing profits, like Micah, Isaiah, and Elijah, et cetera, right? Uh, we're also not just going to think about mass attendance numbers. Now, we care about that. But in some sense, the number itself, uh, this, is my, this is my analogy of, this, of why this is important, uh, why we're not just going to think about numbers is, although we use numbers in analysis, but you gotta interpret them and ask the bigger questions. But let's just say we got 100 new people coming to church, right? You know, is that a win? Bingo, right, so numbers are not the, the thing, right? Now, it, that could be a good thing, but this is my thing, is like, I, I hear this a lot, because I go to churches all over, do lots of talks, and. Uh, people want to come up to me and, and tell me their life story, which, you know, it's cool. But a lot of times, you know, so this is how it usually goes. None of you did this, by the way, so I, I feel a little hurt. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, this is how it goes. Some, some gentleman comes up to me and says, yep, I've been an usher here for 50 years. Now, that's a beautiful thing, right? You've given your whole life, not your whole life, but a lot of your life, to ushering, you know, or I, you know, I've been running the festival for the last 25 years, or, you know, I've been the, he oh, we have the head of the, okay, good, yeah, it's great, uh, got to be careful with my analogy here, uh, you know, you know what I mean, you know, I've been, I get this sort of litany of I've done this, and I, and my, my great, great, great grandfather, you know, he built the, the altar, and, and all these, things. and these are all good, right, these are all beautiful things, but to your point, what's underneath it? So I've been an usher for 50 years, but I've been a jerk, right? Could be, could be, or I've run the festival, please forgive me. <laughs> I've run the festival for 25 years, but it's been a selfish endeavor and people are totally teed off at me uh, because I'm just kind of, you know what I mean? It's like, so the question is not just numbers, it's conversion, transformation. It's how many people are, are coming to Christ? How many people are growing deeper in relationship to Christ? How many people's lives are transformed through relationship with Christ in the church? That's what we're really going for. So again, the big question, the big dream. So it's not just numbers, right? So <clears throat> this is the mission statement of the archdiocese. Um, really the mission statement that drives our planning, right? Uh, how do we help all of our parishes, and in your case, particularly you, how do we help become, pro have more people proclaiming Christ with their lives through word and action? How do we help people grow as disciples deeper, truer, more, uh, in a more transformational way through the sacramental life of the church that is transformational? And then they go out and they transform the world, whether it's through um, uh, the, just the, the authenticity or their witness or their compassion for the least of the brothers and sisters or whatever it is, let's all also remember, and this is another theme we like to, to talk about in planning is, we wanna think about mission vibrancy inside the walls, right? So we want dynam dynamic disciples inside the walls, but then we also want mission vibrancy outside the walls because Jesus teaches us to go, you know, go outside and take care of the people outside, transform the neighborhoods, et cetera, et cetera. So we're about mission, not method. Uh, there's no silver bullet. There's not like a special technique that we use for 
being missionary. It's more the spirit of how we do it. Here's the quote I mentioned earlier, right? Um, uh, one of the things we do in planning is uh, uh, wrestle with sort of a big vision, ask some big questions to get to uh, some big visions or, or hopes. Uh, and then we kind of reverse engineer from there in the planning process is how do we get from where we really want to be, we're here now, that's where we want to be, and knowing um, by, by following some steps, how do we get from here to there, right? So that we have a, 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 a pathway. Almost done. Um, uh, I saw people smiling all of a sudden. There you go. <clears throat> so we have, and this is actually a better version of this, is in your folder. If you see the missionary uh, strategic planning process flow, uh, you can look at this yourselves. There's more detail, but uh, basically we follow a six-step process, right? Um, step one is forming a prayer and planning team. We can talk more about the, the details on this later, but um, it, we don't do anything without being grounded in prayer. You know, so as I said at, at the very beginning, this is, not a, this is not just a planning process. This is a journey of faith. And so if we're going to do something significant, believing the Lord has a plan for your, your parish, we're going to ground that in prayer. So we want to make sure we have a, a prayer team to, to uh, hold this up. And then a planning team. You know, we can't, you can't get anything done with large groups of people. You need to have some sort of group that's um, representative of your leadership, and, but also nimble enough. And then we do a process where we do continuous uh, reporting out and um, circling into the, the leadership, pastor, staff, parish council, finance council, etc. Uh, so that's just what that is about. Uh, next step is making sure the planners get their mind, their, their, their frame of mind set. So we do a little bit of an orientation kind of session with them on getting formed on discipleship and mission. And this gets to the whole question of plan toward what? When you understand what Jesus had in mind for his church, you start to plan differently. And so that's how we set it up. <clears throat> and then we move into vision and mission casting. This is the why, you know, the why of what we're going to do. Uh, and we have processes and tools for these things. Then we move into determining our starting point, and that's where you kind of look at a lot of things that are true right now in your parish, like, okay, how many members do we have? Uh, what are the trends in membership, trends in sacramental life? What are some of the demographics we, um, about our neighborhood? Um, uh, what is like 10-year projections for growth, families, et cetera, et cetera? So we do kind of a, a deep dive there and some other things um, along the way. And then, uh, that, which leads to setting the strategic direction for mission. And like I said, we're not going to have a binder. We're not going to have 100 things. We're going to have one or two main things we're going to try to focus on. And then um, uh, put together SMART goals for those uh, to make sure we actually can do what we really want to do and check did we actually accomplish it and have a, a, a way of measuring. And then uh, ultimately communicating to all the parish, aligning the parish around our goals and um, doing evaluating of the plan. Here's the thing I always like to remind people of. Uh, planning is actually not a moment, it's a process. Planning is not a one time pour a lot of energy in and then stop and hope. Actually, planning is continuous. Because you, 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 think, you think about things, you set your plan, you set your vision, you, you set up your, your, your pathway, strategic direction, how to get there, but you're always, re you're always evaluating, right? Are we getting where we wanna go? What's working, what's not? Ooh, we maybe need to pivot here and try something new to get where we want to go, right? Um, so to be thinking about the big questions and planning sort of in a more ongoing way. These are just some of the things. This is the uh, other sheet you have in your folder. Should be another sheet that talks about um, tools. Do you have tools? Okay, good. You have tools. Is it, did you get missed? No, here it is. It's behind yours. There you go. Yes, missionary planning and leadership, planning tools. So the, say that again. I brought 25. I, I, was, I thought I was being optimistic, and look what happened. The Lord has plans. Yeah, if there's, if there's any couples or friends or, uh, you know, you just don't want to speak to each other ever again, if you want to share your folder, that'd be great. Um, so... So what you see here are the tools that we use in our planning process. Um, there's a whole, we, we call it our toolbox because there's so many things in there. 
And uh, this is where we custom our tools and our process to the individual parish based on the needs and the situation and, and how that all flows. But we just want you to know we actually have tools. Um, and some of the key ones are uh, demographics. Uh, we love to look at demographics and study them. Again, numbers are just numbers. Data is just data. It's not an answer or a vision. But at least it's informing a little bit. It gives us some more information, right? So we like to use the, the mantra, uh, data-informed, mission-driven planning. So we want to make sure we know the data. Uh, we um, have some other tools, the Disciple Maker Index, and uh, is a kind of a, a, a survey that was done a couple of years ago, and every parish in the Archdiocese did it. Um, I don't know if any of you took that survey. Does that sound familiar? Disciple Maker Index? I don't know. It depends on the... It, it really varied from parish to parish how involved you were, but uh, if you had a decent amount of people take it, we have some very good information um, on your parish in that as well, on people's relationship with Christ and their journey in faith, and also how they feel about the parish. We also have a mission identity assessment, which is kind of a, a quick um, measuring of a uh, parish in 10 different uh, um, areas um, about uh, mission vibrancy. So that's a simple tool we can use. Cultural snapshot inventory talks about the culture. I don't know if any of you have heard the, the famous Peter Drucker quote, right? Um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Anybody ever heard that? All right, very, very common, famous business saying, which is the, it's just simply saying that um, if, if, the, if the atmosphere in any organization is sort of toxic, you can have the greatest plans in the world and it, they're going to die. So this, this, the culture inventory just helps us think about the overall culture of your parish. We've had parishes um, go through this and say, you know, you know what we need to do? No, we not, we're not even going to plan anything because what we're really going to focus on for our plan is developing this culture of uh, invitation and welcome. We're going to just really go all in on that and try to build that much more in our organization, um, right? Because you only get one chance to make a first impression, and, uh, and that makes a difference in terms of the community and how people relate. Um, we can do SWOT analyses. I'm sure some of you have done SWOT analyses, right? That's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats around various things, and there's different ways to do those. Um, and uh, we could also do things like focus group or town hall or, um, you know, um, interviews. Or, so there's lots of different tools and strategies that we can use, but always in service of the one goal, which is um, getting you toward a plan to where you want to go. I think we're almost done there. Um, this is the great story. Just a reminder, the planning is in active faith. Planning is in active faith. Right, just as uh, Jesus and the disciples, the disciples had been out fishing all night long, caught nothing, right? And then Jesus says, uh, hey, put out into the deep. And they're like, hey, really? We've been fishing, we caught nothing. But they do it anyway, right? Um, and uh, we worked all night, caught nothing. <laughs> but then they uh, put out into the nets, and you know what happens. And right? all of a sudden the nets are tearing, they have the, the fruits of their labors are overflowing that's because the lord blessed their fishing and it was no longer just human fishing it was fishing for the kingdom bearing great fruit that's what we hope for any planning process well great that is the uh that's it we're at the we're at the q a section of the evening um so let's let's just take any questions you have yes you have a lot of time so we could, we could talk, talk for hours. Let me pull up a chair here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> can, I, uh, can you tell us what MTS is after your name, please? Oh, it's just Master of Theological Studies. And let's say that one of us had a question and we wanted to reach out to you. Do you respond to emails? Yes, I do. What is your email address? Yes, I have cards if you want them. I don't know if I have 25. Uh, but if you want to call me directly, my number is on the phone, first of all, 414-758, I never call myself, uh, 2215, 414-758-2215. Email is my last name, Harter, H-A-R-T-E-R, my first initial, R, at 
Archmill, A R C H M I L dot O R G. I also never email myself. <coughs> Harter R at Archmill dot org. Great. Of course. You dial that number, you're going to get me whether you like it or not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's fine. Do you want to go to choir? So, or? <laughs> so I gather um, your presentation this evening is a uh, gives us a taste or it's a tease. That's all it is. Introduction to strategic planning. Now these, like this page, each of these categories, because the title is in blue, is this on the website where we click on that? We open it up and there is more information there. Is that the way that works? No, or you have, those are not hyperlinks. Those are just fancy ways of delineating the different sections. <laughs> so you have everything that we can say. I mean, we can always explain more verbally, hence the calling and emailing part. But yeah, that's why I gave you those handouts so you can read more in detail. So we could actually be going home as confused as we were when we walked in. The front well, door. I hope not. <laughs> but no, 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 no. well, no, because there's a lot of information here, and mm -hmm. it's, it's yes. kind of, for lack of better terminology, it's, it's kind of vague. Sure. You uh, do you have more specific questions? <laughs> Or do your questions have questions? <laughs> sure, this is, just to go back to your original point, uh, this is, like I said, I'm not selling you anything. <laughs> uh, all we're doing tonight is giving you the overview of what strategic planning is. Now, this begs some questions, and, and this is where, you know, Father, maybe you can weigh in, but, you know, the, the, when we give this presentation, we, we assume that the parish and its leaders are going to have deeper conversations about, you know, is this something we want to pursue? Yes, no. Um, uh, and, and it said in that, pro, you know, you know um, do, we, do we have a specific approach we want to take? And usually there's more conversation. So this is, this is conversation number one. So don't worry about. So then again, you would come yes. out to meet with us again. Yep. Because a counterpart of yours Yes, she, she's no longer. Uh, I know she's not. Yes. And that's a great loss to there today since right. she retired. She worked with our group many times yep. in stewardship. So right. that so, is kind of what you do with regards to this. Exactly. So that's one of the things. Thank you for saying that because that's one of the important things I did not talk about, which is our approach to strategic planning is a hands-on walk with you um, throughout the entire journey every step. So instead of saying, well, here are the steps. Good luck. Uh, no, we actually walk with you. We provide the tools. We facilitate the whole process. Right. Yep. Highly paid consultants. Yes. <laughs> well, my question then, I think it's, it's more for Father Michael. Great. So our, um, I'm assuming we're looking at embarking on a strategic planning process. <laughs> this That's is correct. This is like cutting our teeth on it right That's now. That's correct. So what we have to do, and this is part of the reason why I invited people from the various standing committees of the Parish Pastoral Council and members of the faith community of St. Rita's, and we have some extras tonight, which is fine, <laughs> but with Rich's presentation, now we have a sense of a direction, at least that's the way I feel, so that as a community, we can come to the point where we choose one, two, or three goals we wish to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And as members of the faith community who are also in leadership positions, can wheedle down a list of uh, you know, 10 or 12 things down to three or four, Correct. Or two, or even one, if it has to be one. But then, as the community leaders of a parish committee, <clears throat> we can all be aware of and be on the same page so that now we're not shooting off in different directions, working against one another, but we have a common goal. So, for example, <clears throat> yep. 
Everybody, one of those big questions that's out there. What are we going to do with the monastery? Oh. Now that nobody's living there, right? <laughs> what are we going to do with it? That's one of the big questions I put out to the councils, parish finance and parish pastoral. When somebody asks you about what's going to happen with the monastery, you turn it around and say, what do you think we ought to do with it? What is your suggestion? Because we're looking for answers. We're all in the same boat. Yep. What do you want? What do you think we should do with it? So that's an important big question. It's right? a huge question. Yeah. It's a very expensive question. Yes. <laughs> so does it does it get sold? Does it get transformed into a different usage? Does it generate income? Does it? I mean, these are all questions, Is right? It Is it you need to install a lift, an uh, elevator? Right. All of these. How much is that going to cost? Right. And, you know, all these things have to be taken into consideration. It's like planning for that vacation. You need to get reservations. You yep. need to get money together. You need to get your bag packed. You need to get out, embark on the trip. However, that happens. That's right. That's right. And fundamentally. You know, let's just say, I'm not saying we should do this, but let's just say we're going to sell it, right? Let's just say that. The, the point is not that answer. The point is why. You know, so we're, what, what, there should be, it should be wrapped around a bigger mission question. Like, in terms of our parish, if we sell that, then we get this much extra money. What are we going to do with that money? Just put it in the bank? Or are we going to, are we going to put it towards some special mission initiative? You see what I mean? And this is what um, Father's talking about, is why we, we don't have the answer, but we need a process to get to some answers. But it has to be wrapped around um, uh, the understanding that we're a church first, not a business first, and so therefore we ask deeper questions to get to where we need to go. Yes? And I'll just say, Father Michael, that um, I, we had the experience with Carol that she did precisely what you asked them to do. She asked both me and my husband about what did we think should happen to the monastery. Way to go. Gold star. Well, I just thought it was important, and I've asked numerous of different people what their feelings are on it. And Beautiful. Yeah. So again, this is this is a this is a this is a tool we could use in planning, like do focus groups or do a town hall meeting or do some interviews with key leaders, key stakeholders, whatever you know, these kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. so this is basically an introduction to the strategic planning process, and I desperately want everyone to be on the same page. We all understand that this is a process and we have a long way to go, mm -hmm. but it's initiated now and we have an understanding as how it's going to unfold, a little bit of an understanding of how it's going to unfold. <laughs> okay. Right, right. And, you know, in all fairness, this is a, uh, how should I say this? Um, it's a discovery process. So in some sense, to be confused is normal. Because we're not saying this will happen, and then that will happen, and this will happen, and then, boom, it will spit out that answer. Now, this is a discovery discernment process guided with some specific intentionality and tools to open up the question and, and then discover the answer through all that we do. Right? So I don't know if that helps on the confusion side. The other thing I just want to highlight, too, as Father Michael is saying, is getting everybody on the same page. You know, we, you know, getting a, a organizational alignment, that's what we talk, talk about and call it. it, you know, so that we're all pulling in the same direction. And especially if it's a big question, right? If it's something big, we should all be caring about it and pulling in the same direction, right? Um, so that's important. A lot of times as parishes, we, we, we're, we have a hundred different groups or ministries or committees or whatever, and they're all doing their own thing, and, and we never get kind of that, that kind of big swoosh. Of, of energy and commitment and alignment as a, as a parish. And, and especially when it comes to the big questions, that's what we want. In yes, sir. experience, because you work with a lot of parishes, what is usually, the, this is the first step, what would be the next, normally the next step? Yeah, so normally the next step is 
uh, the internal leaders talk a little more amongst themselves about, well, what do we think? Do we want to go ahead? Yes, no. Uh, also, it usually results in a couple more conversations uh, uh, with me and some of the leaders, uh, just to get, get really clear. Um, and then in terms of practical next steps, once we think, okay, we're going and we want to move, um, then we start coaching them on, okay, well, you need to get your prayer team uh, together, and, and we teach them on that. We need to get our planning team, who's going to be on it, who should, you know, kind of coach around that. Um, and then it gets to, like, okay, let's set, a, let's set a meeting schedule so we can get started. Yeah. When you go to the scriptures and it said, you know, Jesus said, if you're going to go against an army of 20,000 and you only have 5,000, when does that come in, into play? You know, when you negative analysis, how many people do you think will get energized by this? I think that's a key question that I would say in our period. I'm, I'm an outsider. We got permission from the pastor to come here. I'm from St. Patrick's. And uh, unfortunately, our pastor isn't here right now. We have our associate filling in. And I'm on a committee, and so I'm trying to find out, be of assistance to them, which direction. I, can, I read his newsletter all the time because I used to be the pastor council president. And... Uh, just trying to feel where are we going, and, and I know I come to mass here very often because first of all I live in the neighborhood, and secondly because I am fed spiritually by the homily, and, and it's a chance. <laughs> no, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, take and eat, and unless we eat yeah. something here, if we don't get any food, we're going to go away. Yeah. People vote with their feet. Especially today. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Great. Other questions? Yes. So, and the other thing is, once we do get a plan going, <clears throat> and we get functioning in that plan, mm -hmm. this is not a plan that stops. Nope. This goes on and on and on. Even we have to keep it going even beyond us to the next yes. generation. generation. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're going to fall back yes. again and be. So there's so many things that are profound in what you said. One, planning by definition, if it's real, never stops. It keeps going, right? Two, a lot of organizations is not just churches, it's businesses, everybody. A lot of organizations put a lot of energy up front in some kind of planning process and then they then they kind of take their eye off the ball and it just dies right so again you want to keep you know and again the other thing is this is why we ask the big questions right because we want to ask the big questions not only for us but for future generations right there's there's eternity at stake here <laughs> so let's you know take that seriously there's also a consensus program yes Absolutely. It's, it's, it's easy to say yeah, you're going to go do a plan in that process. Yep. At a scale level. And uh, we're trying to decipher our next steps. We've got a team together. Uh, we're going to become close friends. Uh, but still, ultimately, as is becoming evident here tonight, there's others thinking of planning for the parish sure. just the past all the costs. So that's where you gotta get alignment in the organization. You gotta build consensus and community and you know conversations and lines of communication, get everybody on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Is yep. that one of those things where you're like building a culture? Well because that, culture eats planning for breakfast. Yes. And we want this culture to eat this plan for breakfast. Uh, yeah. Culture is everything. I mean All of a sudden, I'm hungry. Who has the pancakes? Uh, other questions? Great. Great. So, um, do you all, maybe this is a pretty large group to ask this question, but so I'll maybe ask you, Father. Um, do you have a sense of, of uh, who you want to have some further consultation with after tonight in terms of like, what are we doing? Where do we want to go? What next steps we want to take? Do you have a sense of that? Okay, yes. great, great. Because that's really, you know, whoever asked about next steps, that's really the best next step is as pastor, 
you gather some key stakeholders and, and say, well, what are we going to do? Why do we want to do it? How do we want to launch it, if, if at all? How do we want to align our organization? Right? I think this group is perfect. We'll meet again next week. <laughs> Not bring, on Wednesday, but it's choir practice. Bring, <laughs> bring the donuts. And religious advocacy. Yeah, that too. Yeah. It's a good problem, though. If you had nothing else going on, that would that'd be different, right? We're happy about that. Time frame between so that we don't let time slip away before we do the next step. Do you recommend a certain time frame that we adhere to? Yes. Oh, are you talking about the actual meeting when we yeah, actually like get when we meet and then when we get together with you next? I mean, because you don't want to just yeah. say, we'll do it in six months from now. Right. Yeah. That, what, you, know, you know the answer to that, don't you, right? That in any organization, if, if we just wait too long, all the energy and all the focus is just going to dissipate. Because we all have a million other things to think about, and we'll just start thinking about them. So I'd recommend that you know, maybe within a month we, we at least have another conversation. Maybe you get together with your, whoever you want to talk more with uh, within the next couple of weeks, if that's feasible. I don't know. Are we, we're not quite into Advent yet. Um, Got to think about all those things. We're into the holidays. Well, yeah. Hunting, yeah. Hunting <laughs> Thanksgiving, <laughs> Packers. Oh, yeah, all the holidays. Yeah, right. Yeah, one, <laughs> one week away from deer hunting. That's right. Deer hunting's almost here. Unless you're bow hunting. Then you that's yeah, right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, the, your point is well taken. You don't want to lose. You don't want to lose momentum. If if you and even when we meet with teams, um, you know, it, we like to meet at least once a month. Um, even that sometimes is a little too seldom. So every couple of weeks is helpful because a lot of times you lose momentum, and you spend the first half of the meeting saying, "What were we doing again?" And oh, so and so's not here. Mm, I wonder what. You know, it's not helpful. Yes, ma'am. Would you be open to a Zoom meeting? Of course. Okay. We've done a million planning Zoom meetings over the last, whatever it is now, <laughs> 18 months, five years. I don't know what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, anything else you need from me? Thank you so much for caring about the Lord and your parish enough to come out. Um, and be with be with each other tonight. Uh, please pray for this. Pray for your parish always, um, and let's let's believe that God has big plans for your parish. Amen. Good to be with you. Good to be with you.